If you're thinking about moving to Austin, one of the first things you're going to need to consider is which area are you most interested in. Now part of that is going to be determined by your budget, but budget is only the starting point. Once you get to a certain price range, you can buy a house almost anywhere in the metro area. There will be a difference in how much house that same amount of money can buy in different areas, but a clear understanding of what your priorities are will make it much easier to focus your search on the right areas and find the perfect home. Stick around for this video and I'm going to tell you all about it. If you were to make a list of all the things you want in your next home, you're going to find that the more things you add to the list, the smaller the number of possibilities will be. In fact, if you add certain ones together, you won't have any matches. Let me give you an example. On the left side is the price breakdown of current listings in the city of Austin, and the right side is Williamson County, which is directly to the north. Williamson County is a much bigger geographic area, but both of these lists have about the same number of listings slightly over 3,000. If one of your priorities was to live in the city of Austin, but you had to be under $300,000, there would be virtually no options unless you wanted to consider a condo. In Williamson County, you'd have more options, but you'd be much further out. Most of the homes in that price range are gonna cluster around Gerald and Taylor. Since the combination of buying a house inside the city of Austin under $300,000 produces no matches, you're gonna to need to re-examine your priorities. If the budget was the most important, then you would need to expand the area you're willing to look in, which would likely mean you will be much further out, like Gerald or Taylor. The other options would be, one, look at condos inside the city, or two, adjust your budget. In other words, one of these three priorities would have to change if you wanted to purchase a home. If you were able to increase your budget to between three and $400,000, there'd be more possibilities in the city, but look at Williamson County. There are almost five times the number of houses to choose from in that price range, which brings up a couple of questions. If your number one priority was to live in the city of Austin, would you consider a condo? If you did, you would almost double the number of possibilities. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a high rise in downtown, but you could get a nice condo in an older building with low monthly HOA dues and be close to downtown like this one in Allendale. Now, if it had to be a house and you had to be close to downtown, that kind of money is only going to get you a teardown that you wouldn't even be able to live in. There are houses in that price range outside of central Austin. This section east of downtown has a lot of undeveloped land, but it's almost as far out as Maynard. In neighborhoods like Forest Bluff, you'll find homes built between 2003 and 2018 that are listed under $400,000. There is a section of newer homes in this same area that were built between 2018 and 2020, but the newer the home, the higher the price. There was a lot of development in this area until the early 2000s. The next example I'm going to show you is reflective of the kind of development that has happened over the last decade. You'll see many examples of this closer to downtown. This area clearly has been here for a while, and sometimes the new construction looks a little out of place compared to the other properties on the same street. A lot of people who buy in this area tend to think in terms of what it may look like in 10 to 20 years. It is convenient to Tesla, and that could drive growth to the future. This brings up one of the biggest concerns in most home searches. How close will the house be to work? In other words, how long is the commute? As I mentioned, someone who works at Tesla might find this area very convenient, but someone who works at Apple, which is located all the way across town, probably won't. Of course, if you're still able to work from home, the commute won't be a concern like it would be if you had to drive back and forth every day. Coming back to the price breakdown, you'll notice that the city of Austin has a much higher percentage of homes listed for over a million dollars. These tend to cluster to the south and the west of downtown, but there are examples of new construction in that million dollar plus range in most sections of the city. These houses are in the Crestview neighborhood, which is north of downtown. The old home, which was built anywhere between the 40s and the 60s, is torn down and a brand new contemporary style home is built. The majority of houses listed in the city of Austin will fall on that $400,000 to $700,000 price range. While in Williamson County, 66% of the listings are between three and 600,000. That is a pretty big range, but that's where your options will be. Let's look at a couple of examples. These homes are in Bradshaw Crossing, which is in South Austin. Lennar has been building here since the early 2000s. There are also homes in the Legends of Onion Creek, which were built by William Lyon Homes, which is a California developer. 
These homes were built between 2016 and 2018. As a point of reference, these homes originally sold in the upper $200,000 range, but current prices start in the upper fours. Also in this area, Braun Homes is building in the Cloverleaf subdivision. You can find some resale homes in this area in the low 400s. As we talked about earlier, the majority of homes in Williamson County are in that three dollars to $600,000 range. You can buy roughly the same size house for about fifty dollars to $100,000 less than it would be in the city of Austin. And it might even be a little bit newer. These homes were in North Leander in the Larkspur development. They are milestone homes, so the designs are a little different from the others we looked at. They are roughly the same age as the ones in South Austin, but will be less expensive. To sum up, there are houses available in the Austin Metro in just about any budget range. Prices tend to be lower the further from downtown you look, but once you get to that $400,000 to $700,000 price range, you can buy a house almost anywhere. Now, if you're financing, the rising mortgage rates will restrict your buying power. But remember, sellers and builders have been impacted by this market shift as well. If a seller is motivated, or if the builder has inventory homes, which are ones that they've started construction on, but the original buyer backed out. In either scenario, they eventually become willing to offer price concessions or other types of incentives to attract a buyer. Now, I'm certainly not saying you're going to be able to buy a million dollar house for $200,000, but I have seen listings where the price has been reduced 10 to 20% lower than what it would have sold for six to 12 months ago. We are in a very uncertain time in the Austin real estate market and most buyers justifiably are very cautious. Many, if they can admit it, are afraid of making bad decisions. We just came out of a period where prices went up 70 to 80% in less than two years. That has never happened in history. On top of that, Austin has also been ranked as one of the most overvalued markets in the nation. There have been a lot of people forecasting a housing market correction or a full-blown recession, and it's continuing to look like we may have already entered it. The good news is that people have bought and sold homes in the best of times and the worst of times. If you plan to stay in your home for any length of time, this current market volatility will even out over the long term. Worst case scenario, consider those markets that were hit hardest after the 2008 housing crash. Every single one of them eventually recovered and saw home values appreciate over the long term. Austin is still growing. And when you consider the investments that companies like Tesla, Samsung, and Apple have made in facilities here in the Austin area, it's very difficult to forecast a scenario where those companies pack up and leave and take all those jobs with them. If you're wondering whether it's a good time to buy, I would be happy to talk with you and offer my insights. I can't make the decision for you, but I can provide market insights and analysis that will help you make better decisions. Don't hesitate to reach out if you've got any questions or if you'd like more information about specific areas. I get emails, texts, and phone calls almost every day from people who think about buying or selling real estate here in the Austin area, and I'd love to help you out too. If you like this video, you should check out this other one that I did. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. All of my contact information is in the video description, so don't be shy. Let's make your real estate dreams come true.